Siyaroji has been saying that the yogis need to focus their mind on their body and apply effort and aim every second of the time. And if one does this um, respectfully and carefully, within seven days one will see special things. When one observes, there are three levels on which one can see. Form, manner, true nature. We should understand these three. So there's the form in Pali, Santana. That means the shape or situation or form, like the belly, the standing, the body, the whole body. It means um, so the form or the shape of the body or a part of the body that we're looking at. And when there's a cause for things to happen. Uh, For example, there's bending, stretching, lifting, moving, placing, rising, falling. There are various actions that occur. And these are called manner. This is the second level of things that we can see. So the, when, when these actions or activities occur, then we make a label according to whatever language we use. We use ordinary words to describe the things like bending or stretching. And at the start, what we see when we try to meditate is we see either the form, the shape of things, or we see the manner, the position that they're in, the, um, the action that is being performed. And this is good. At the start, what this means is that our mind is under control. So this is good. And Also, sometimes at the start, when we watch the rising and the falling of the abdomen, we see we see it mixed up with the true nature. We see the true nature mixed in with the form or the manner of rising and falling. And at the start, too, this is good. When our seeing becomes strong, then there's no more form to be observed. There's no more rising or falling. There's, ju- there's no more bending, stretching, and so on. These things weren't there to begin with. These are concepts. So when one's uh, ability to observe becomes stronger, those drop away, and we see the true nature that is there what is really there. And seeing in this way is knowledge. So in order to see on that level, to see the true nature, the characteristics that are really there, every act act that we do, the yogi has to observe. Yogi has to do this in a consistent way, do it regularly, just do it one after another. And then one's vision will get better and better. So it's the way our vision, our ability to see, improves is like how an, a line of ants looks to us. At first, when we look at it from far away, it may look like a stick or a rope. It doesn't look like a line of ants. And as we go closer, we see that it's not a stick or a rope. It seems to be moving. As we go closer, even closer, we see that there's one ant after another moving individually. And one, one ant goes by and is gone and another one comes. So we start to see in that way 
the individual ants, and so too in the practice, we come to see true nature occur one by one. And now it's been three weeks of the retreat, and yogis, some yogis are able to speak about the things they see in this way. If yogis are not able to say much at this point, it's because on the yogi side there is something missing. And in order that, uh, in order that something won't be missing on the yogi side, the, the teachers are encouraging the yogis to practice. Yesterday, Siyadoji spoke about this, giving an example about how we come to know the taste of things when we eat food. If we put a, mar a morsel of food in our mouth and we don't make the effort to chew it, we don't make the effort to try to get our upper jaw and lower jaw to connect, <clears throat> then our chewing won't be effective and we won't taste much regarding the food. But if we chew with proper effort and proper attention to the act of chewing, then we'll start to know the flavors that are in the food. The tongue will start to know the sweet, sweet flavor or sourness. And although that is not all that is there to know, we start to know the flavors. So in every act that we do, there are characteristics, there are, um, there are things that are like flavor to be known in these actions. And so in order to know these, we have to observe them when they happen. We have to observe seeing when it happens, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, rising, falling, bending, and stretching. When these happen, we observe them and we add a label. We label them as they happen. Um, and this helps us to become more skilled. When we, um, when we become more skilled in our observation so that we're applying effort and our aim is accurate, when we observe the object, then the sati and samadhi, awareness and concentration, will arise. So this is what is meant by observe at the moment of arising. One has to um, bring these observing qualities together at the moment the object arises. And as we do so again and again with these qualities of effort, aim, sati, and samadhi, awareness and collectedness of mind, then we'll start to know the, the flavor, so to speak, that is in the action. So this is what is meant by, know, by um, only if one observes at the moment of arising will one know true nature for sure. So this is a saying, only, at, uh, only if one observes at the moment of arising. If we want to know the individual characteristics, the individual true nature that is there to be known in every act that we do, whenever, uh, when something happens when we perform an action, when there's rising and so on, then one has to apply one's effort and aiming. So applying effort and aiming to observe the object as it arises is the yogi's job. And only when one observes at the moment of arising will one know true nature. So to say that only when one observes at the moment of arising 
means that this observation at the moment of arising is the condition that is necessary for the knowledge of true nature to come about. Knowledge will come about when that condition is fulfilled. If we observe with applying effort and accurate aim, right at the moment an object arises, this will bring knowledge about. So one has to apply effort and accurate aim, and then knowledge will arise. This doesn't come about through reflection. With, with reflection, our progress will be slowed. We're, we, uh, we, we won't accomplish gaining knowledge through reflection. And as Sadoji mentioned is in the example of seeing an apple in front of us. When there's an apple in front of us, just by seeing it, we don't know the taste yet. Just by seeing it, knowing it's an apple. We don't know the taste directly until we actually take the apple, bite into it, chew it. Then we know that it's sweet or cool, sour. When we observe the rising and the falling with the method of satipatthana and our mental energy becomes strong, then we observe qualities that are there, such as stiffness or tension or motion, vibration. These are some of the qualities that can be found in rising and falling. And one, while one is observing that, one also comes to see that what we watch has a beginning, a middle, and an end. There's three parts to it. So at the start of our being able to observe the characteristics, the true nature, like stiffness, tension, moving, and vibration, at the start, what we see is the middle. We just see the abdomen while it's stiff. We see uh, when we observe the rising or when we observe the falling, we just see it while it's moving, while, it, while it's collapsing. So um, this is what is meant by when one observes at the moment of arising, one will see true nature for sure. So one sees it, first of all, as it is, as it is in the process of expanding, rising, or falling. And when our effort and aim become better and more accurate, then we see the start of the rising as well as the middle. So we we see how it. it, it um, it starts to rise and then gets tense, for example, or starts to rise and then gets uh, tight. So one sees how that starts and happens. This just naturally becomes apparent to us as our observation improves. But at this point, we don't yet see the end of, phen of phenomena. So when we observe the falling, uh, Two, we see the be how it begins to uh, collapse and move. So we see the beginning and middle of the rising, the beginning and middle of the falling, and other objects. So this, too, is how when we observe at the moment of arising, we come to see true nature. And as we continue to observe, then we come to see the whole thing the whole rising from start all the way through the middle until the end. And those for those whose observation is good, one after another, they see the whole rising as it, as it goes through all the different stages from the beginning, middle to end, the whole falling, beginning, middle to end, one after another. The, this, the yogis come to see in this way because of doing the practice respectfully and carefully. 
So in that, that time, one sees the whole process of rising. But in this, although one sees how the rising, for example, starts, continues, and then comes to an end, there's no need to pay attention to start, middle, and end. There's no need to label this, this is the start, this is the middle, this is the end. These things just appear in the mind. What we need to do is to try to watch the whole thing from the very moment it starts and to keep our attention there until the very end. So by doing this, we come to be able to see the whole thing. And this too is how we see true nature when we observe at the moment of arising. So when we see... um, when we are able to see true nature, only then will the compound characteristic appear, sankata lakana, the characteristic that things have of having a beginning, middle, and end. That only starts to appear in our mind after we see the true nature clearly. And when one starts to see the ending of the object, when, when, when one is able to see the objects come to an end, then this is the start of Vipassana knowledge. The true nature of things, sabhava, don't appear to people who reflect. When people reflect instead of observing the most that will appear in one's mind is just the manner of things, the manner or position. So if, if sabhava, true nature, is not seen, then its beginning, middle, and end, of course, won't appear. That is sankata lakana. And If the beginning, middle, and end of true nature doesn't appear, especially the end, then knowledge won't arise. So when one observes rising, the rising arises and then passes away. It starts and then it comes to an end. Falling, too, it it arises and then it passes away. Lifting arises and passes passes away. Moving, placing also arise and then pass away. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, all these things, anything we can observe, arises and passes away. So all um, seeing this, especially seeing the last, the ending of all these um, true nature or sabhava, all these true nature, all, all true nature comes to an end. It arises, and having arisen, it passes away. All mental phenomena arise and then pass away. All physical phenomena arise and then pass away. But these are all the same in that way. Having arisen, they pass away. And this type of characteristic is called common characteristic, or samanya lakana. So the individual characteristic is sabhava lakana, or true nature. And then the compound characteristic, that, that of having beginning, be, appearing to have a beginning, middle, and end, is sankata lakana. And their common characteristic is called in Pali samanya lakana. So only when one sees the ending of the rising, the falling, and other objects, uh, and one knows, oh, this disappears, only then will we um, start to see this, only then are we seeing the common characteristic of samanya, lakana. And this only happens when we are able to see how things have a beginning, middle, and end. When, we, when the sankata uh, 
lakana, the compound characteristic that is the beginning, middle, and end of things. When that appears, only if that appears, will we start to see what these true nature have in common, the samanya lakana. Knowing how things come to an end like that is the start of Vipassana knowledge. The word Vipassana is made up of the prefix V and Pasana. And V means to see the physical and mental phenomena, mind and matter, or nama and rupa, which are related as cause and effect, to see how they arise and pass away in a special way. We come to see this. It's not imagination. It's real seeing. And this is the seeing in this special way, how mind and matter that are related as cause and effect, how they arise and pass away, is Vipassana is what Vipassana means to see in this way. So when one observes the rising, it arises and then passes away. One sees this. One observes falling, it too arises and then passes away. One by one, the rising and the falling, each time we observe them, we see them arise and then pass away. And from time to time, there's heat, We observe it, it rises and passes away. Sometimes coldness, we observe it, it arises and passes away. Hardness, we observe it, it arises, passes away. Sometimes when there's seeing, we note it, it too arises and then falls apart. Hearing, when we note it, it arises and passes away. So when we are... Uh, observe the object and see that it passes away time and again. This is Vipassana knowledge. And only when one sees Samanya, only when one sees the common characteristic that is rising and passing away, has Vipassana knowledge begun. So observing in this way at the start of Vipassana knowledge the discomfort and pain in one's body becomes very strong and when we observe it it becomes worse something aches we watch it it gets worse these pains are just the way they were these pains have, have, are just normal But what is happening is that our mind has become like a magnifying glass. And it seems to be magnifying. Everything seems to be much bigger than it ever was before. So at this stage, please do not give up. Because if one shifts and changes every time there is pain, then one won't get over this stage in the practice. So as much as possible, one needs to try to be patient in observing pain. So one should just surrender oneself to the pain without worrying about life and limb. Because as Sayadoji said, no one has died yet of watching their pain. So as we observe, as we sit, our, our hip hurts, our knee hurts, our bottom is hot. And when our observation, uh, um, when, when our observ- observation gets to be very strong, then the form of the knee or the hip, the bottom, all these things disappear and all there is is just what knowing and true nature and this just comes and goes 
at the higher levels of the practice, um, this is more obvious. But at the beginning of Vipassana knowledge, the form is still max, mixed in with the pain. And when there's form present, then there will be this uh, idea that this is my hip that hurts, this is my bottom, this is my knee. And that um, when one gets over that, when the form is no longer there, then that idea that I, my knee is hurting is no longer be, will no longer be there. So when, one, when, one, when one's observation becomes strong enough, that form drops away and there will only be pain and knowing the pain, the pain and the knowing mind. And as we continue to watch, it goes away bit by bit. And then one feels happy about observing pain. Before this, one feels distressed when pain arises because one worries. But at this point, when one has gotten over pain once, then one feels like one can challenge the pain because just one time getting over it, one has become very courageous. So it's very important to practice without favoring one's body, without uh, worrying about life or disease and so on. No one has died of observing pain. And in fact, uh, people have gained good knowledge from it. So now the yogis have been practicing here. Most yogis have been here for three weeks. And how many yogis have been able to overcome their pain? The meditation teachers can say. Um, there are some who have able to have gone past this stage in the practice, and uh, and so have really been able to continue. And other people are still at the stage of starting and stopping with observation of pain. At this stage, if one continues to know, it gets better. Once one has overcome pain, one's practice improves further. And first of all, um, one's awareness, one's noting, observation becomes better in that previously, before this stage, one had to make effort to note every object. And most of the time, one would miss, and only a few of the times was one able to catch things. But after overcoming pain, the noting becomes very uh, uh, swift. So when the rising happens, one, one observes that it rises and passes away. Uh, one sees that things arise, pass away. Heat arises, passes away. Cold arises, passes away. In some in stages. So the objects occur very quickly, and also one's observation, one's knowing of them also is very swift. And at that time, because one's notings are continuous, the mind becomes very clean. And this clean mind makes the blood in our body also quite clean. And it makes our skin, the blood is clean, so the skin also becomes clear and clean. And light starts to come out. And sometimes uh, yogis find that the, the whole room becomes light. Even the whole monastery can become light from the light emitted from a yogi's body at this stage in the practice. So the knowledge also becomes very swift and sharp at this point. And because of that, one's faith also becomes quite strong. One feels convinced this is really the true way. Before, one thought this is true, but now one, makes a, one is 
clearly decided that this is correct. And one feels happiness both in one's body and mind. The mind and body feel peaceful, tranquil. Both mind and body feel light, gentle, and it's very, very capable. The, the mind and body become very capable. Our work becomes uh, quite uh, upright. We become very skilled at the meditation practice. So before we had to note things one by one, but now uh, in the practice the yogi is very skilled and the, and the noting happens quite easily. So at this stage in the practice too, yogis tend to remember things that they did wrong in the past and they remember their old life and they, they realize, oh, this thing that I did was wrong. And, they, and because they remember these things and they want to uh, be upright and honest, this sense of uh, honesty is very, very strong at this point in the practice. So they even come to the teacher and confess, I did this in the past, I did this, and now I know that this is wrong. So um, at this stage in the practice, the taste of the Dhamma is very special. And one's effort also at this stage in the practice becomes steady. It just increases steadily at this stage. Uh, before one had, one's effort was sometimes excessive and sometimes weak, uh, and one had to really work at it. But at this stage in the practice, one's effort uh, continues steadily and goes up and up. So these are the special types of things that a yogi can experience at this stage in the practice. If one reaches this stage, then one's sati becomes upatana sati. That means that it, it's whatever arises, it just sticks to it and is established on that arising object, whatever arises. So before one had misses uh, in, in one's observation, but now the mind is ready to note the objects the, uh, very easily. So at this point, one feels that the method is correct. One feels decisive about this. And one, this type of this, uh, decisive faith is called adhimalka, the type of faith that one has in the method coming through, one uh, make decisive uh, decisiveness from seeing the benefit of the practice. And one also comes to have faith in the Buddha because one understands that this Dhamma, which is true, was revealed by this person. So one comes to understand and have faith in the Buddha. And one also comes to realize that there are people who have practiced the Dhamma and gained these benefits. So one comes to have faith in things that one only had heard about before. So this too is a special uh, thing that happens in the practice. At this time, because of the momentum of the Dhamma, the blood flowing in our body becomes very clean. And as the blood flows through the body uh, so cleanly, diseases which couldn't be cured before are overcome and they don't come back. This can happen at this stage in the practice. And before, uh, other, what else is special is that before this stage, one just had ordinary faith. But faith becomes a power. This, uh, the, the, there are five mental powers that um, come to be at this stage. 
their mental factors that were there before, but they become very powerful at this stage. And the first is faith, and then effort. One's effort uh, also be becomes uh, like a power, virya bala. And when our effort is powerful, when difficult, uh, uncomfortable feelings, vedana, arise, uh, one can observe them with strong effort and overcome them quickly. One also has the, um, has the courage at this stage to avoid doing things which are unsuitable. And when one has done something wrong, one is, has the courage to admit uh, one's wrongs. And because of the um, powerful effort, sati also becomes powerful. And with powerful observation, then samadhi follows. The mind becomes collected, and these two bring about panya, very powerful wisdom. So from very, uh, starting from very small and detailed things, one is able to see clearly. So these five mental factors of faith, effort, sati, concentration, and wisdom uh, become very, very powerful. And in, as they increase through the practice, they become like ruling factors they rule the other factors in the mind so that one, uh, with such good control, then one doesn't make any more transgressions. And this is really the start of becoming a good person, this level in the practice. At this stage in the practice, too, one, especially people who haven't read much, or don't have much background knowledge about Dhamma, they think that they have gained special Dhamma at this point. And they think that they've gained the end of the path. And um, so, and even, even people who have some um, background knowledge about this can, can make this, can think like this because they, they think this stage in the practice is so good. So they get a, get a, kind of get attached to it. They, and this disrupts the practice, taking pleasure in the, in the things that happen at this stage in the practice. So at this stage, it is very, very important to have a good teacher who can keep you on the right track so even people with study can uh, think that this is such a good experience, that this is the end of the, the, the task. So if one experiences these things and finds them pleasant, then one has to note that. And if one finds that one is taking pleasure in the types of things described or any things, then one has to note that and overcome that taking of pleasure in the uh, in these thing in these experiences because taking pleasure in them is going to stop the progress. One can't go forward in in with while one is taking pleasure in anything. So at this stage, one needs to have a good teacher who will keep one on the track of observation. So if one, uh, again, if one gets attached to these very special experiences and stops one's practice, then it will be a loss. <laughs>